In this episode of Ask Dan, we're gonna talk about AR and VR. Is it too late? Is it too early? What's the deal with it? And what's going on with Microsoft To Do and all the note-taking apps? Are they ever gonna merge into one? All that and more, stay tuned. Would it be possible to connect an external GPU to the Surface Go through the USB-C connector? So we recently reviewed the Surface Go and I did address this in that review, but still I know there's a lot of confusion around Type-C and Thunderbolt 3 and what you can do with it. So no, the Surface Go has a Type-C 3.1 port, it has display, it's power, it's actually a very good port, but it does not do Thunderbolt 3. So that means you cannot connect it to an external GPU. And to be honest, it doesn't really make that much sense for a device that costs this little, but there's also hardware limitations here. This is running an Intel Pentium chip, and as far as I know, Thunderbolt 3 is not supported on this chip slash motherboard, and that's really the restriction here. Don't forget, Microsoft's up against a lot here. They can only do stuff what Intel allows them to do, so I talk about this and what to expect on the October 2nd event video, but when it comes to things like PCIe lanes, there's limitations. There's only about 12 PCI lanes on current boards. The new Whiskey Lake processors that are coming out, they'll support up to 16 PCI lanes, and that makes all the difference. That means on devices like the Surface Go, in the future, they put in a more powerful processor. In theory, yeah, you would be able to connect to an external GPU, but we have to wait for the stuff to come along. It's a little bit expensive. As much as I'd love to have Surface Go with an external GPU, we'll just have to wait at least until next time to see if it happens. Is AR or VR already becoming an afterthought in the tech world and for consumers? All right, so this is a really interesting question because I love the idea of future computing and the ideas around it, but yeah, AR, VR is still just not really catching on. Sure, the Steam store is creeping along, HTC Vive is still there, and even Windows Mixed Reality is chugging along, it's getting updates, it's getting better, and I'm still impressed with the fact that Microsoft created a Windows 10 world that's mixed reality. It's actually really impressive, but yeah, overall, this stuff is still too early, and it all hinges upon the hardware. It's still just cumbersome to put on, it's an experience to get wired up, you gotta be in your home, and I really think that's the issue right here. Even myself, I have a multiple of these headsets and I barely ever use it. But then when I do use it, I'm always blown away by how cool it is. But for your average consumer, I don't think this makes a ton of sense. I think a lot of this will depend on that hardware shrinking down, just becoming easier. When I think about like the new show on Hulu called The First, there's a scene where Sean Penn puts on basically sunglasses and you can watch video with them and experience different realities. And to me, that's kind of be the threshold for this stuff. It's when it's so easy, you just put on glasses then I think that's gonna be the real turning point, but we're still far off from that. That doesn't mean though these companies should not be investing in it, creating the technology behind it to make it happen. You don't wanna wait for the hardware to show up and then all of a sudden have to create all the software around it. So I think Microsoft's doing good here, but yeah, temper expectations around this technology. Do you have any news on when or if the Edge browser will move into the Microsoft Store? All right, ever since the Edge browser came out with Windows 10, we've been expecting and hearing rumors and talk that, yeah, the Edge browser will eventually go to the store and therefore you can get updated more frequently. And that has not only not happened, but the rumors and the expectations around it from the Edge team themselves have seemed to be, well, gone away. And as far as we know, no, there's really nothing new to report on this topic. We'll try to find out more at Ignite in the coming weeks for Microsoft when we talk to them and maybe at Build next year. But I think some of this may hinge on Polaris and the idea of Windows Core OS. Maybe they can decouple Edge from the OS experience at that time. But right now, Edge is tied really deeply to the OS experience and it's a big shame. I agree 100% with you and for everyone who wants this in the store. The idea of being able to update Edge seems to be a better way to compete against Chrome, which you, know, you can say what you want about Google, but they do update Chrome a lot and that's part of the reason why it's so popular. They have a very incessant pace about how much they update this and Edge needs to really compete. I'm not sure waiting on quarterly or bi-yearly releases is really the solution here. Will Microsoft ever merge its multiple to-do apps? All right, it's one thing you can accuse Microsoft of is having redundancy. So they have seemingly a lot of apps where you can take down notes and jot down things. You have sticky notes, you have to-do, you have Wonderlist, you have OneNote. And it's definitely overlap between those, but they also have distinct usages. Now, while I was in Berlin for IFA 2018, I was privileged to be able to stop by the Microsoft office where they do work on to-do and OneNote and sticky notes at this place. And it's also the former Wonderlist team. So if you don't know, Wonderlist was bought by Microsoft and that team has been folded into a larger one that's 
part of OneNote, and they've now created To Do. Now, To Do is actually replacing Wonderlist. Wonderlist is on hold. To Do is getting all the new features, and we're actually starting to see new features coming to To Do that a lot of users have asked for. It just got live tiles, and now has direct inking support in it, and there's a lot more around it that's coming. So the question is, are they gonna merge all these, or what's going on with it? And part of the problem here is when you look at something like Microsoft Launcher for Android, it has a to-do widget in it. So you think Microsoft to-do, well, no, this is a separate to-do. This is like just a generic to-do. And how does something like that happen? So when I actually asked the to-do team about that, even they were kind of surprised about Launcher having that. And this goes to show there's still problems, I think, in Microsoft with organizations. Now they did just go through a reorg. So a lot of this is being figured out. But yeah, sometimes you have different teams who, if you're on a Microsoft team and your goal is to create an awesome product, you want to do that. And you don't really care what the other guys are necessarily doing. You want your product to be the best. So the Launcher team, I think, did their own little to-do note-taking thing. And then now there's a separate to-do app, which we all know that is on Windows, Android, and iOS. That will be figured out. Yeah, the launcher will eventually fold in the actual to-do into it. And it'll be things like in to-do, getting Cortana and Microsoft launcher support, as well as other features. But there is a lot of redundancy. We see the same thing with Skype and things like GroupMe, as well as Yammer, which is all getting merged into Skype as well. And then Microsoft Teams, it's all it can be very confusing. Microsoft seems to be figuring it out. And I do hope with this latest reorg, they do. All right, that does it for this episode. Remember, if you have a question, use hashtag AskDanWindows on Twitter or drop me an email at AskDan at WindowsCentral.com. You can also leave me a comment below and I'll try to take note of it. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.